This video is brought to you by Box.co.uk, Birmingham based retailer that stocks over 50,000 products that are supplied throughout the UK. Hey, it's Carl here from Gaming Till Disconnected, and this is a review of the MSI Z97M Gaming Motherboard. The MSI Z97M is a micro ATX motherboard, one of several motherboards from MSI that uses Intel Z97 chipsets. Here are the specs of the system we used to test this motherboard. We built it to reflect the fact that the MSI Z97M Gaming is designed for mid-tier setups, costing around £1,000 to £1,200. As well as the MSI Z97M Gaming motherboard, you'll find four SATA cables, a matte black I.O. shield with red accents, an SLI bridge, an audio power adapter, M connectors, a door hanger to make sure you don't get disturbed when gaming, an MSI badge featuring the dragon emblem, a set of stickers to label your cables, and the usual user manuals and driver CD. In terms of visual traits, the board itself is predominantly black with red accents. Both of the VRM coolers are designed to imitate dragon claws, with red talons clutching at the heatsinks, and feature silver MSI dragon heads. The South Bridge heatsink features the MSI logo and gaming series badge over a brushed aluminium shroud with red accents. Opposite these coolers sits the 4DIMM memory bank, which allows you to install up to 32GB of DDR3 RAM. It's worth noting that the motherboard can only accept RAM sticks with a maximum speed of 1600MHz, although you are able to overclock it to achieve greater speeds. If you do end up putting faster RAM in, you will find that the speed has been downgraded to 1333MHz. I would be sure to confirm that there will be enough room between RAM sticks that have tall heatsinks and any aftermarket air-cooled CPU heatsink you may have attached. Between the VRM coolers and DIMM slots is the CPU socket. Being a Z97 motherboard, the Z97M supports LGA1150 Haswell or Haswell Refresh processors. It should also be able to support the 5th generation Intel processors, slated for release in 2015. Under the CPU sockets, you will find two PCIe 3.0 X16 slots and two PCIe X1 slots. These are capable of running two-way SLI or Crossfire, though you will definitely have to be mindful of how much room your graphics card takes up. There isn't very much room here, and chunky cards like the Zotac GeForce GTX 970 Amp Extreme Edition all but dwarf the second PCIe X16 slots and the first PCIe X1 slots. Two slot cards such as the MSI GeForce GTX 980 should be fine, though it's going to be a pretty tight fit. Just between the two PCIe 3.0 X16 slots is an M2 slot, which is able to accommodate three sizes of M2 SSD. There are six SATA ports located to the bottom right of the board, allowing you to install other drives. Important to note, however, is that using the M2 port will render SATA ports 5 and 6 useless. This means that you will only be able to connect 4 SATA drives, but I really can't see many people wanting 4 hard drives in addition to an M2 SSD module. Just above these SATA ports is the front panel USB 3.0 and 24 power headers, as well as onboard power and reset switches. You will also notice a button labelled OC Genie, which allows you to overclock your system with a simple press. A two-digit display presents error codes during the post-process, after which it switches to show the temperature of the CPU in degrees Celsius. Those who are picky about appearance within their PC may be annoyed by the fact that the display emits a green light rather than a red one. Along the bottom of the board you will find two USB 2.0 headers, front panel power and LED headers, a 3-pin header for the Molex adapter that powers the Audio Boost 2 module, a JCOM 1 header, which allows for older serial connections to be utilised, a JTMP1 header, better known as TMP, for security related functions, and two of the four fan headers. The other two of these are located at the top of the motherboard. Finally, you will find the rear I.O. ports. There are dedicated gaming ports, two USB 2.0 and one PS2, which MSI say provide more responsive, smoother gameplay. In addition, there are six USB 3.0 ports, two eSATA ports, a button to clear the CMOS, an Ethernet port, audio connectors powered by Audio Boost 2, an SPDIF out port, and, as the CPU includes integrated graphics, both the display port and HDMI out. MSI have made a concerted effort to provide top quality audio with the MSI Z97M gaming motherboard. For one, their USB audio power technology utilises the ATX power to provide stable USB power no matter how many devices you connect. This means that you can get a stable 5 volt power supply and better signal transmission to audio devices connected via USB. The audio connectors themselves, made out of gold to give minimal distortion, are connected with a physically isolated audio PCB. 
This is similar to having a dedicated audio card in that the audio circuitry is far less likely to receive any interference from other sections of the motherboard. The audio circuitry itself is also shrouded with electromagnetic interference shielding to further reduce the interference. The Click BIOS 4 matches the appearance of the motherboard itself. The majority of the interface is in black and red, with brushed aluminium effects in places. As well as being aesthetically pleasing, the MSI Click BIOS 4 is fairly easy to use. You are able to overclock the CPU with the click of a single button, or enter the advanced settings to alter the voltage and frequency to custom values. As with most unified extensible firmware interface BIOS, it is possible to use a mouse to interact with the interface, making it far more approachable to use. MSI provided a whole host of accompanying software with the Z97M gaming motherboard to help you make the absolute most of it. I found myself using the MSI command center most frequently. This is an all-inclusive tool that allows for on-the-fly overclocking and tuning at the motherboard, as well as providing at-a-glance information about the system and its status. For overclocking, you can manually set voltages and frequencies for individual components, or for the less experienced user, you can use the OC Genie to overclock your system. In addition to this, MSI have bundled in other software to enhance your experience when using the motherboard, but you can head over to our written review to find out more about that. Here are the benchmarks we got when testing the motherboard. We set out to make this an inexpensive build, costing around £1,000. After running some intensive benchmarks, I have to say I'm very happy with the outcome. We were able to play all our test games at the highest settings with no issues. You can check out these benchmarks and more on the written review at GamingTillDisconnected.com. I've been using the MSI Z97M for quite some time now and have found a lot of things to like. From an aesthetic standpoint, the red and black colour scheme looks great with the fire red edition of the Bit Phoenix Prodigy M, which we recently reviewed. If you're looking at building a compact or semi-compact mid-range system, this motherboard lets you take advantage of your components with very little knowledge about each aspect. Having said this, advanced users shouldn't find this motherboard in the least bit limiting. MSI let you push your system as far as it will go, through both their presets and the customization options they offer in the BIOS and included software. I am very pleased to say that we are awarding the MSI Z97M Gaming Motherboard with the Gaming Till Disconnected Pro Class Award. It's a great, flexible Micro ATX motherboard that shouldn't disappoint anyone looking to build a mid to high range Micro ATX system. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this review, then make sure you give it a like, and if you want to keep up with the latest in gaming tech, subscribe to us or head over to our Google, Twitter, Tumblr, or Facebook pages. To learn more about the MSI Z97M gaming motherboard, you can read the written review on our website, which goes into even more detail. Once again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.